Hey everybody, it's Romania Black. Um, so we're on volume 22 of Yona of the Dawn. Uh, the last two volumes were really, really good <laughs> and centered around Suwon and Hawk. So it only makes sense that I'm looking at the cover of volume 22 and it's Suwon and Hawk. <laughs> it's like, oh, of course it is. With all the white birds, of course it is. Of course it's those two because man, Kusanagi just taking the knife, stabbing it in the heart, twisting it a little bit, giving us all the angst, all the feels, and yet all of the wonderfulness that is Yon of the Dawn. So we rounded out an arc last volume. That arc ended. Uh, we rescued Riri. Uh, everybody worked together. It was a big old jamboree. And then we all went our separate ways. And who knows what's going to happen now, right? Who knows what's going to happen next? We kind of left off with Hawk and Yona maybe somewhat figuring out that they might have feelings possibly for one another. Yeah. Uh, we've talked about this in the Discord and on Twitter and in the comments, but this really is a very well done slow burn. It is a slow burn, but it is, it's burning. It's, it's getting there, right? And this has been like a little spark in the flame. So I've got a couple comments before we start. Um, be happy. Be happy was talking about, I was a little bit confused by Gunte in the last volume or in volume 20 wanting to adopt a daughter and uh, Be Happy was like, oh, well, that's just Gunte's way of saying, oh, I'll adopt a daughter and then you can marry her, Suwon, since you won't marry anybody else. And it's like, oh, Gunte's just trying to match make. Gotcha. I, I do appreciate that Suwon takes it all in stride because he's like, guys, I'm only hawk sexual here. <laughs> like, let's be real. And just uh, uh, in regards to that, I do agree with Be Happy's comment that Suwon and Hawk are pretty much like friendly soulmates. They really are like soulmates, like in so many ways. And Kix K and a couple others were commenting too about how like Hawk is... Hawk and Suwon, they just, they complete one another, right? And it's so sweet because for Suwon, he's like the calming factor for Hawk. And he's like the, the strategist that meets Hawk's power. And Hawk was, Suwon was the only one that Hawk thought that Yona could be, that deserved to be with. And at that point, I was like, be happy. I agree with you. I agree that Suwon was the only person that Hawk was happy with Yona being with until now. I'm like, Hawk, self-respect yourself. You deserve Yona just as much as Suwon does, damn it. And I feel like Hawk is maybe, maybe slowly like letting that go and being like, yeah, I do want Yona. And I do want her to know that I want her. And so it's like, yeah, you should tell her these things. And so she doesn't think you're joking. Like she has been for the last several years. And that's, it's been a confusing point for Yona because Yona is in love with Hawk, but she thinks that he's been joking with her this whole time. And it's like, they just need to talk and they're not quite there yet, much to our chagrin. But yeah, um, and that kind of goes along with what Kotaro14 said, and that was that Kusanagi, Kusanagi has this great ability to create characters, whether they're male, female, gender neutral, whatever, that are capable of feeling vulnerable and caring and loving for one another. Like Hawk is the stereotypical, like masculine, brawny, brute strength man, but he's like one of the most vulnerable characters in the entire series who has like one of the most complex emotional states outside of like Suwon and Yona. So it's amazing that Kusanagi gives us these characters that are strong and are defined by stereotypical masculinity, but gives them like extreme vulnerability and the capability of loving not only Yona, like Hawk not only loves Yona, but he also loves Suwon too. And that's the source of a lot of angst in this series because there's Suwon's betrayal has driven a wedge in between him and Yona and Hawk. And I feel like with this last volume, I feel a little bit more comfortable being like, okay, they've all worked together to save Riri. Now, if Suwon could just explain himself and talk things through with Hawk and Yona and Hawk and Yona could listen to him and understand and they could just talk about these things, then maybe we'd have a happy ending and nice things. <laughs> but I don't think we're going to have nice things. That Kusanagi's not going to let us have that. So I don't know what this volume is going to bring. I'm not going to look at the chapter titles as per usual. I'm going to go in blind. Um, I do find it fascinating the dragons have all interacted with Suwon at this point. Um, Zeno was pretty cryptic last volume, as Zeno does. So I'm curious to see what's going to go to from here. But please, no spoilers. We'll cross these bridges as we go, as I catch up with you all with the series. Even if there's stuff that the series hasn't told us yet, I, I trust in Kusanagi. I do. I think she's got a plan. And I'm on board for it. So... With that being said, uh, I haven't looked at the comments for volume 21 yet. I'll do that for volumes 23. But in the meantime, we're going to read uh, this volume right here and just see what happens. It's a new volume, new arc. 
Brand new arc. We'll see where our crew goes to from here. I'm excited. We're going to start this here in three, two, one, and let's go. How could you end on that cliffhanger? No. Oh my gosh. Ah, no. You know that I was going to be okay, but, but he's far from the palace and no. No. Oh gosh. Come on now. <laughs> oh, this volume. Holy cow. Oh. Okay. Okay. Well, we we've got some interesting things going on here. Um wow. So, way back, way back when I was starting this story, way back when I was starting Yona the Dawn and I was and I was having conflicting thoughts about Suwon, about Taejun, about lots of characters. Somebody in the comments said that this series will make you question all of the loyalties that these characters have together. And I was like, okay. And I'm definitely seeing that because just when I think Suwon is like going to be on our side, things are going well, something's still up. There's still, there's still a piece of the puzzle that's not, that Suwon's not revealing his hand. There's still a piece to the puzzle in all of this that is interesting, right? So I'm going back to this contents here. I love the watermelon picture, so thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. So the watermelon picture is super cute of Zeno and all of them. I love that Sheena has his fangs eating the watermelon and Keija's the one cutting it. Very, very cute. I like it. But yeah, so I get, okay, Kix K or Be Happy, one of y'all were saying that there is a reason that Gunte, that Gunte views Riri as delicate. It all makes sense now. She's got a crush on him. She looks delicate around Gunte because she has a crush on him. That's why Suwon and Judo see her so differently. Wow, that all makes sense now. I, I just love that everyone is trying to hook up Riri and Suwon together, but Riri has this like just one-sided, unrequited love for Gunte that she just can't help. So one just has to wait till he's 35 and then it'll all change, right? <laughs> so I love this. Okay. So uh, we have the off the Mangaka's note. Thank you for picking up volume 22 of Yona of the Dawn. The special edition volume 22 comes with the Zeno Arc Part 2 OAD. I haven't seen it yet, so I'm really looking forward to it. Oh, yeah. In volume 21, chapter 123, when Yona was thinking back on the fun time she had with Suwon, she thought, whereas when I'm with Hawk, it's a little different. Some readers took that to mean that she always had feelings for Hawk. But that's not the case. These are Yona's current feelings. I'm sorry if I didn't convey that well enough. Hawk's love was really one-sided for a long time, to put it bluntly. Oh, okay. So Yona has just recently developed this love for Hawk. It's just been a recent love that's developed, but Hawk has loved her for quite some time, along with Suwon. Is his one-sided, Hawk is just like full of one-sided love. Or maybe not, I feel like Suwon does love him. But man, oh. I feel like, I feel like Suwon doesn't quite confirm Riri's thoughts about them working together with Hawk. And I, Suwon is good about, he wants people to get credit where credit is due. So Suwon's like, no, Riri, you had a major part in this. I don't think that you didn't have any trajectory with the kindness you showed to your people. Suwon's like, no, you had a great impact on your people. Don't, don't shortchange yourself or forget about that. Right? And I like that Riri and Suwon are now like on first like first terms, like first name basis with each other. They're on speaking terms. I like that. Um, so Riri's trying to figure him out. But of course, man, I just love that Gunte only sees her as this delicate flower because she presents herself to that, to him. I And the whole thing with Suwon, it's the same animation. It's just cut and pasted. He's like, you've, met, you've become a remarkable woman, right, your majesty? Huh? Oh, yes. She's She'd make a great wife, right, your majesty? What? Oh, yes. He's like, you're going to be very important to Koka. And he's like, huh? Oh, yes. Wait, what? <laughs> I, just, I love that Suwon's like, I. And the image of her, like, with her hands over her face, the ultimate, like, crush face. That, that expression, I have to take a picture of it. It is the best thing in the world where Suwon's just like, oh, okay. So might I offer to you all, might I offer to you, I've been saying that Suwon has been gay. I've been saying that Suwon's hawk sexual. It could just be that Suwon's ace. He's not in love with anybody. 
He's aromantic. He doesn't, he doesn't have romantic feelings towards anybody. I'm on this train now. Suwon is totally an ace. I'm, I'm on board with this, our ace king. He's like, I don't really love anyone. I, that's that's the thing, right? So he his expression with her like freaking out and fangirling over Gunte, he has no clue how to take it. He's like, ugh. If he knew Yona had been like this around him, I think he would have had the same expression, like, ugh. And I just love, I do love that him and Yona had the exact same responses to Riri. They're both like, you do know he's married, right? And she's like, yes, I'm aware. But I I love that she's like, is there anyone you have feelings for? And he says, not especially. And he says, I don't think I really understand love, but I do care for people. And I don't think he's dodging the question. I think that Suwon, he is not romantically in love with anyone, but he cares for people. So he doesn't understand what, what love is exactly, but he understands what it means to be caring and concerning for people. And so I think that that's why I'm like, yeah, he could totally be aromantic. I'm like, Suwon could totally just not have sexual or romantic feelings for anyone. He's just like, eh, I don't really feel that way. And it gets tied back in the chapter with Hawk later on, right? That I like that Riri's like, I want to learn more about him. Like he's mysterious. I can't quite pin it, but just like with the dragons, her and the dragons are like, I don't sense anything bad about him. I can't reject everything about him. Even though he can be a dangerous enemy, there's just something about him that's interesting, right? He draws people to him, right? It's it's fascinating. And so I love that Riri and Yona get to like meet back up again. I like that Riri does not mention Suwon. She's like, no, she doesn't mention it because she knows she's like not a good subject, right? She doesn't bring it up. But she does bring up uh, Lord Gunte, who she has a crush on. And I like that Yona's like, you know he's married, right? And she's like, yes, I'm aware, thank you. But then she brings up Hawk. And Yona is like, yeah, I'm maybe in love with him. And I'm like, oh, like finally, like the, the heavens part, the angels sing, like Yona's finally realized this. But I love that. I love this honesty where Yona's like, it just, we've been together forever. This seems a little late to be happening for me to be developing feelings for him. But here we are. And I, I love that, you know, Hawk, Hawk has loved Yona forever. And he just never thought it was going to come true. He always thought that Yona was going to love Suwon. So Hawk doesn't realize that Yona's in love with him. I'm sure if he did realize that, it would change some things. But Yona's just like, I realize that I don't love Suwon anymore. I, I, I love Hawk. And she's like, I don't know what to do about this. She's like, I can't take this. I'm like, I don't know how to, how to do it. And I love that Riri's like, you just need to talk to him. And she's like, this is embarrassing. And I just love the idea that Riri's like, come on, just communicate. Communication. Riri is trying to be a wing woman and be like, get with this man. Come on, you can do it. And Yona's like, I'm just not there yet. But it's progress, right? The fact that Yona is admitting her feelings for Hawk, that she's admitting she loves him, that it's not been something that's been there all along, something there that wasn't there before. She is coming to grips with her feelings, but she's just not ready. She's not sure. So, and I like, it feels very much like Sasaki to Miyano, if you've watched that series. In Sasaki to Miyano, Sasaki, like, finds out quite quickly that he likes Miyano. Very quickly. And that's kind of like Hawk very quickly realized he liked Yona. But in Yona's case, I feel like Yona and Miyano are very similar, where there, there's these feelings developing, but they don't want to bring it out in the open unless they're sure. Because at this point, Yona does not realize that Hawk really loves her. And Yona doesn't realize that that's the case. And she's like, I don't want to say that I like Hawk and then it not be mutual and then me not be sure. And, you know, and what if he does like me? And she doesn't think that's possible. But then, you know, I'm sure she's thinking if he does like me, I want to be sure of my feelings too. So it's a very similar situation. And then, of course, we have the hairpin. The hairpin comes back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The hairpin comes back and we find out that, yeah, yeah, so there's the hairpin, and Suwon obviously gave it back to Riri. Now, the question is, the question is, they got all the stuff back from Say. Did Suwon just put that stuff in with all the stuff from Say to return, I'm assuming? Or did Suwon give it to Riri, and she's giving it back to Yona? I, I think it's, I don't think it's the latter. I think it's the former that Suwon probably put the trinket in with the lost and found stuff. He didn't keep it for himself, which is kind of sad. I really thought going into this that Suwon was going to keep the trinket and give it back to Yona personally, but he doesn't want anything to do with Yona, we come to find out. He doesn't want her name spoken in the palace. He doesn't want her talked about. He doesn't want her brought up. So we're going to talk about that. But 
as Hawk, looking soft and beautiful, has this moment, you know, about realizing what he should do, we have Hawk um, having this flashback between him and Suwon. And it's this beautiful flashback chapter that's related to the cover. It's gorgeous. I love it. But it's Hawk asking Suwon if he likes Yona. And Suwon's like, I do. But I like all these different people. And Hawk kind of miss Hawk kind of misinterprets it a little bit. He's like, he really did love all well, he says he really did love all people people equally. Except it's not only people, he's interested in things too. And so Hawk's like, man. Hawk's like, there's people that I can't forgive and that I can't love, and I don't know how he does it. He's like, he has such a broad worldview and he's so open-minded. Hawk's like, I'm just not like that, and I want to be like him. Like it's just it's furthering our understanding that Hawk and Suwon are like platonic soulmates, and that they've, you know, that Hawk looks up to Suwon so much, and Suwon always seems so like out of reach to him, right? Always seems so out of reach. But again, I feel like Suwon reading this volume, I'm like, I don't think he romantically likes anybody. He just loves people. And he just is fascinated by people, which is interesting, right? It kind of reminds me a little bit of King Hiryu, a little bit, that he was fascinated by people too, which ties back to the whole Hiryu becoming human and saying that I, I love people and I want to support them, even, which is funny. It's the craziest thing. It reminds me of Hiryu, Suwon does in this moment, of how he loves people. But then... The whole thing with Hiryu being like, even if they betray me, I'll still love them. That ties to me more to Yona. So the mystery deepens. It's just like, Kusanagi, I trust you. I trust Kusanagi Aramangaka that she's got plans. But I'm so curious. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we have the whole thing where he gives... Hawk has to come face to face with the idea that he, he gave the hairpin back to Yoon to give to Yona because he didn't want to confront Yona about it because... It just, it tortures Hawk, and we find out why, but it tortures him, that hairpin does. He's like, I don't want anything to do with it. And then Yoon accidentally throws it into the ravine. It falls down the ravine, and Hawk's like, well, damn it, it's important. We have to go get it, right? So then they devise the plan to try to get it from the ravine. It's stuck on the tree branch over the waterfall. Um, okay, so we have a Makaka note about this chapter, though. I struggled with this chapter more than any other in the history of Yona. It deals with Hawk's relationship with Suwon and his feelings about him. It's a complicated topic, and I need to tread lightly. I spent about 20 days on my storyboard wondering how to portray it. Storyboards usually take about five to seven days. I like serious stories, but all this thinking and drawing serious situations makes me want to just do something ridiculous. Although I can't do that at this point in the story. So I'm really glad that someone like Kija is around. Wow, okay. Because, yeah, this is tackling the heart of Hawk and Suwon's relationship and why Hawk is so angry. Yeah, it, it's tackling the very heart of it. I 20 days on a storyboard when it usually takes her five. Yeah, figuring out how to do this because it, it's such a delicate situation because the hairpin represents so much between the three characters and especially to Hawk. Like I, even though it was a hairpin given to Yona, I think it represents the most to Hawk. And how he feels about her and Suwon. And how he feels about Suwon himself. And so I like that Kija is here for comic relief. But I love that, that Kija asks. He's like, is that hairpin important to you? No. I, if I'm honest, I want to smash it. And so then Yoon pieces everything together. And says, this is something King Suwon gave her. It is. And Hawk can't answer. And he's like, why would Yona hold on to it? She was horrified about it earlier. And, and Yoon's like, oh, did Yona love King Suwon? And I like that Kija and Jeha are like, oh, wait, th this has been a triangle this whole time? This has been a triangle? I like that. The, I love how they draw. I love, I want to take a picture of it. I love how Yoon is drawn here and how Hawk's expression is and how Kija and Jeha are. They're both like, oh, oh, okay. Huh. And they're like, Thunder Beast, don't risk your life over it. It's fine. And Hawk goes down to get it. And he's like, I don't mind that her highness loves Suwon. It's not news I've known for a long time. See, that's the thing. And But Yona doesn't love Suwon anymore. Not like that. No, she doesn't. Um, but Hawk doesn't know that. And Hawk's like, 
if I wanted anybody to end up with Yona, it would have been Suwon because he's like, I know she loves him and I trusted Suwon and he was my best friend and we were like platonic BFF soulmates, bro soulmates, bro soulmates for life. And he's like, the thing I find most unforgivable is that you gave this hairpin to her the day you murdered her father. And that's why I love that visual of the crack, the glass breaking between them. And him jumping for it. And I love it. And so I love that at that moment he flashes back and he feels bad for Suwon because Suwon's probably getting, you know, told something awful by Sujin. But he's like, You had a broad outlook on the world. I know that. I love I love this dialogue where he's like, Power and tribes didn't matter to you. You could view the world so impartially. Which is funny because now he's trying to use those power and that tribe to take over these other lands. Even if I couldn't walk alongside you, I was fine. There was no turning back with you. You just looked straight ahead to become king. And I wanted you to sit on the throne one day. So that, that's the whole thing with Hawk. He's like, if I couldn't be beside you, it was okay. He's like, you've always been looking straight ahead. Like, you've always sought to become king. And he's like, I wanted to support you. I wanted you to marry Yona and become king and sit on the throne. He's like, that's what I wanted for you. I wanted for someone that was impartial like you, that had a broad worldview like you, and that didn't judge people and viewed all these people as wonderful and loved all people. He's like, I thought you were benevolent and you would be a great king. And then I got my wish granted in the cruelest way possible. And then I love the water turning to blood and him seeing Suwon's face. He's like, you gave our princess that hairpin and then turned around and went to kill King Il. If you were planning to kill him, why did you smile and give her that gift? Like, he's like, why did you do that? He's like, the day that you killed her father and shattered her world, why? It didn't make you feel anything that you saw how happy she was. He's like, you saw her being so happy and you knew what you were about to do would kill her would just, would crush her to pieces. He's like, why? He said, you said you liked people. It meant you didn't have any special attachment to anyone. You trampled on everything that mattered most dearly to me. That's the thing. That's the thing. Cause Hawk's like, you said you liked all people, but because you liked all people, you didn't hold any special attachment to any of them. He's like, you liked everyone equally, but that didn't mean that you liked anyone more than anyone else. So trampling on her was just something that had to be done. And he's like, the moment you did that, you misunderstood how much Yona meant to me as well. He's like, Yona means, it's to the hawk, Yona means the world to him. And he was fine with letting the person he loved be with Suwon because he trusted Suwon and he loved Suwon dearly. And he's like, well, if I can't have her, then at least she's with someone as great as him that I can't measure up to. And then for him, for Suwon to take that trust that Hawk had given him and shatter it, he's like, and when I saw you try to kill her, I was devastated. It completely shattered my heart. Because it's like everything he believed in and all the love he'd given him and all the trust was just gone. It had been used. Damn. That's, that's their relationship. That he's like, you're the person I trusted the most in the world. And I trusted you with the woman I love the most in the world. Because I knew I couldn't have her. And she didn't want me. She wanted you. And you took everything I trusted and just destroyed it. And yeah, that hairpin represents like the betrayal itself. The fact, the, the hairpin represents that it was premeditated and it was a betrayal. <sighs> and so, yep, they get the, they get the pin and everything and dry it out. But here's the thing. I feel like I feel like that that trip down the waterfall, it was almost like a baptism for Hawk. It was like it was almost like just a revival for him for him to wash away all of that and to be like, "Look, you guys are a riot." For him to be able to laugh around the hairpin, that's growth for Hawk. That's that's insane. Mhm. Mm and Human's like, when I think about how much pain she endured, I don't want to give it back to her, but I will. She's to decide what to do with it. Don't you agree, Thunder Beast? So I'm curious what Yona is going to do with it. I'm curious what she's going to do with it. Mm -hmm. We don't find out. They don't show us. 
I'm sure it's going to be coming up in a future volume. They don't show us what happens to it, but, uh, so yeah. So she goes to Quokka, Riri does. She goes to Kiryu to the, ca to the capital where we find out that the leaders of Say they all surrender to Suwon's conditions. And she questions whether or not King Il was a good king. She doesn't think he was, but she couldn't say that to Yona, right? So it's funny, she can't tell Yona that even though Suwon's the enemy, she can't fully hate him. And she can't tell Yona that King Il probably wasn't the best king, was he? But I think Yona at this point knows that her dad was not a good king. I think she's her and Hawk have figured that out. But it doesn't excuse Suwon for what he did, but they both know that the kingdom wasn't in a great place, right? And so I like that we get Ogi back in this, but Suwon, Suwon's digging up information from Ogi again. He's he's on the hunt for more info, just like before, you know? That's interesting. And and even here, Suwon seems a bit, he is a bit different, right? He's a little bit shadier because he's trying to get information and not draw attention that he's the king. And I, I love that Riri just Riri just pokes at him. She's unflappable. She's like, I'll tell General Judo if you don't just let me in on this. But he's trying to figure out information about Shing, right? He says, you, the four dragon warriors have been seen. He's like, you're trying to find information about Shing. And so he brings up the dragon warriors, right? But Suwon does not seem interested. Suwon could care less about the dragon warriors. He's like, ah, it's just a story. Don't care. And Oji's like, well, they're spreading around rumors, so not just something it's, it's got to be more than just a story right and they say that there is a red-haired girl that is the crimson dragon king from the legends mm. and so ogi's like well rumors tend to be exaggerated so it's not important and suan's like that's true mm. and apparently lots of the fire tribe are trying to catch a glimpse at her interesting so Oji's like, you want some information on Shing. I'll find out what I can. So that's going to be interesting to see, hmm, to see what would happen, what information Suwon is actually trying to find out. I'm assuming it's about Princess Corin and Tao. Hmm. So I like that Riri says, I wouldn't have expected you to have acquaintances. He's like, what did they teach you? He's like, I haven't taken a friend there since I was nine. Hmm. Like he, ever since him and Hawk went that one time, they haven't met any new friends. All right, we got a Mangaka note. In the Nation of Say arc, Riri was punched, stomped on, and had her hair pulled by a powerful soldier and nearly wound up being executed. That was quite a dark experience she had. In chapter 120, she told the people who were about to be executed with her to fight. I think that's what makes her different from Yona. Yona takes it upon herself to protect people, but Riri thinks that if you don't take, don't like a situation, you should stand up and fight back. Her sense of justice is stronger than Yona's. Until this point, Yona felt that Riri was a friend she needed to protect. But after the Nation of Sayark, I think Riri has become a close friend she can respect. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. That's interesting. So yeah, yeah, Yona, that is a really good difference. Riri, Riri convinces, again, I find Riri and Suwon an interesting dynamic because Suwon wants the power of the people and Riri wants the people to fight back when they're pushed into a corner she wants them to fight back Yona on the other hand isn't about people fighting back she's more about protecting people and keeping them safe so that they don't have to fight it's a little bit tied more to King Il right it's it's kind of a, an adjustment of King Il Yona wants to protect people so they don't have to fight in any situation whereas Riri is like no we may have to fight we need to fight back interesting hmm very curious but yeah, so in the palace, she's like, I think you already know that she's my friend. She's very important to me. Do you have any intention of chasing her down? You don't plan to kill her, do you? Is it possible that you want Yona to live? And he stops her and says, your determination and bravery are praiseworthy, but you shouldn't speak that name in this palace. And his eyes narrow. Oof. She says, would you talk about her if we weren't, if it weren't the palace? And he says, I have nothing to tell you. So that's interesting. That, that part makes me go, okay, Suwon, now come on. Uh, Suwon, I know he feels guilty. I know Suwon feels guilty because at this point, him looking at the flower pin that Yona, that Yona left behind, it shows that she still, that despite everything, she still had feelings for him and still cared about him. Now, the question is, he got that hair, the locks of hair that was given to him when he thought she was dead. Did he throw those away? 
Did he keep them? I don't know. It seems like Suwon doesn't feel like he is redeemable. Suwon's like, I've done something that's irredeemable. So the fact that she's getting brought up and the fact that she could still care about him, he doesn't understand. He's like, how can you care about me? Like, after everything I've done, how could you care about me? I'm, mm -mm. He's, I feel like Suwon believes he's, I feel like Suwon feels guilty and doesn't feel like he is worthy of any redemption. And Riri is trying to be like, well, why not? Like, how about you tell me some things? And that look on Riri's face, she was just like, that was a look, the look on Riri's face is a look like, I am not about to give up. I am going to get you to talk, sir, one way or the other. So I'm, Riri's got tea to spill and she needs to learn it first. So I, I that's so interesting. And I know that he doesn't want Yona's name said in the palace because she could be in danger, right? But I love the fact that she's like, well, if we weren't here, would you talk about her? And he's like, what's there to say? And I feel like that's a big difference between Suwon and Hawk too and how they relate to Yona. Like, Suwon does not have any romantic attachment to Yona. He doesn't feel any feelings towards her that way. Whereas Hawk is like, Hawk is a bundle of romantic nerves that just gets shat on every volume. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god! The whole thing in this last couple of chapters, I was like, Hawk, we were making so much project, pro so much progress, and then Mother Nature rears its ugly head, right? So she's talking about her being, being tired, right? And that's about the time that we have these guys show up, right? So we have the people from Shing, which is interesting. The nation of Shing. The one guy, Voldo, kind of looked like Hawk at first. So I was thinking maybe Hawk's from Shing, maybe, but originally, because he was adopted and we don't know Hawk's past, but he looked kind of like Hawk with his hair, but then we find out that, nah, they're just, they're just a different country. It's interesting though. So let's get this mangaka note. We're heading into a new arc. There are so many characters, I can't remember all of them all. Sorry, but since we're already at volume 22, I suppose it might be a normal number of characters for this kind of story. Now, onto a different topic. In the bonus chapter in volume 21, Hawk picked up that cup that Yona used. Some readers claimed that they indirectly kissed. Heh, <laughs> they're right. But for the happy hungry bunch, every day is a struggle to survive. But sharing drinks and food is so common that Hawk and Yona never think twice about it. Heh. <laughs> <laughs> so they did have an indirect kiss and the mangaka knows it, but the mangaka's like, they've had plenty of indirect kisses. I just haven't shown them to you. Ha ha ha. Oh, Kisnagi, you troll. You absolute troll. Murderous troll. Yes, yes, yes. I, I freaking love the animation of this, of this volume. It's so good. All the expressions, everything. So Princess Tao, I liked it at first. They're like, Kija, Kija's always the, the decisive one that's like, nope, we're not doing it. I refuse. Kija's like famous words are, I refuse. And I love this. And I was like, wow, he's so quick to decide things. And Jay was like, wow, yep, we've discussed it. But they say that Quokka's future is involved. So they decide to go. Uh, the the interpretive theater with Kija as the tiny adorable cat is the freaking cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> we've seen in the side, we've seen in the notes that that the mangaka has a cat and it's the cutest thing. But I just the way the cat is drawn and Kija's expressions are drawn. I, I cannot y'all. I just, I honestly cannot. The white goblins, the fact they call them goblins. And then Algira, I freaking love Algira already. Algira with his insatiable love of cats and his insatiable love of animals. It makes sense why he's serving Princess Tao. I love it, oh my God. But his just, him being like, oh my God, what is this cute little cat, pew pew kitty. Just the expressions, the, the, in one panel on one page, there's this beautiful, like detailed, elaborate portrait of him kicking this man to the afterlife, you scum. And the next panel, he has like the giant, cute, kawaii face, like, oh my God, what's a squirrel? Kuznagi, I, I cannot with you. I cannot. But yeah. And so he's just like, listen, well, so she's like, it's not a squirrel. It's a squirrel, not a cat. I, I just freaking love it. And so Voldo and Algira. I just love it. And then they take them. And as they take them to go see Princess Tao, the people in the village are talking about Princess Corin, who wants to lead them to battle. Mm. And it's interesting. We have these two, not to say now, we know Yona and Suwon are cousins. They're not siblings. But you have the family dynamic of these two close relatives, Suwon and Yona, 
right? And then you have these close siblings of Corin and Tao, right? And so you have Corin and Suwon who are both trying to expand their territories and defend their kingdoms and doing so through battle. And then you have Tao and Yona who are a little bit more pacifist. I mean, Yona is not, Yona's not a pacifist as much as her father was, but she definitely does not like the concept of war. She doesn't like the idea of battle. She does not like the idea of violence because she's seen what it does to people and she doesn't like it. So then we get Princess Tao and she's adorable. She's 19, but she wouldn't know it. She looks like she's 12. She's so cute. I love it. And I love that she's just like, you guys want some food? And Zeno's like, yes. And all the animals are like, yes. I just, oh my God. I love how sweet and innocent she is. She's just wonderful. And she talks about how her sister wants to invade Quokka and go to war. She wants them to become a state and a territory within Quokka so that they don't have to battle. I love it. I also love that we find out in the bonus from way back in the first uh, OVA, way back when, like in the first, like volume 12, I think it was, in that bonus story, or it could have been volume nine, that it was originally supposed to be Keija that Hawk was torturing and they made it Taejun, which is funny because back during the Fire Tribe arc, we'd made comparisons to Keija and Taejun. So that that's fun that the mangaka has made it too. But yeah, so I like that she draws... She draws Suwon in her mind as being this victorious general in battle, seeing all the dragon banners and everything. And I love that I, I love that she asks if they're working with King Suwon and Hawk is like, mm. Hawk and Yon are like, yeah, we know what Suwon's trying to do, but we're not involved in it, right? I love that he's like, we didn't fight alongside him. We just happen to want the same outcome. And Yona doesn't argue with him. Yeah. We have no idea what the king is thinking. And that's the thing. Suwon is still playing that close to the vest. We don't know his overall goals. I mean, obviously we think it's to protect Quokka and to strengthen it so that it can't be invaded. But we don't know like what is his end goal. If he's not wanting to become king, what's the end goal of all this? Suwon's like, Hawk's like, we don't know what he's thinking. We don't know for sure. And it's just this really tense situation. And she's like, how about we eat instead, right? So yeah, I... For the record, I applaud Kusanagi for doing something that I've never seen a manga do or that most fantasy stories and most stories in general never address. They never address the female protagonist. They never address it. And it's something that it's considered the most taboo of all things, but it's something that's, that's real. And it's the fact that Yona gets her period. Her period happens during the midst of all this. And I was like, Oh, at first when she like showed the like the blood dripping, I was like, oh, is it did her like injury act up? And then you see her face and she's like, I've been sluggish since yesterday, but my stomach kind of hurts. And she's like, oh my God, my period's come crap. And then she tells Hog not to come near her. And he's like, well, sorry for going near you. She's like, it's not like that, damn it. And Tao immediately understands what's going on. Yoon doesn't know. No one else knows. Puke usually like stuff in its face. But Tao realizes. And it's like, oh, I'll take care of them. <laughs> and so then she's like, are you in pain? She's like, I whacked Hawk without thinking. I wonder if he's mad. And then Hawk thinks of the worst thing. He's like, does she actually dislike me? It's like, he's even more confused. I'm like, damn it, Hawk. Now Yona has to apologize and explain that. I'm sorry. It was that time of the month. I didn't want you getting near me. But I... I really love this because this isn't the first time that Yona's had her period. She says, I, I'm fine. I t don't tend to have pain from this. I wonder if I'm just getting careless. She's like, I've, there hasn't been anybody I could talk to about this while we've been traveling. So she's been dealing with it this whole time. She's been taking care of it. I guess finding ways to hide it and stay away from the guys while this is going on. And just now it just happens to pop up. So I'm like, oh my God. So I applaud Kusanagi for tackling this subject that is very real. A lot of stories just are like, are like women, periods. What are those? What, what, are the, what is that? What are, that doesn't happen in, in fantasy stories. And in this story, it's like, yeah, no, it's a thing. And it's been, she's been dealing with it for a while, but now it's just happened on its own. I, I applaud Kusanagi because not enough stories even tackle this very real affliction that women have to deal with every month so I was like wow that's great glad that glad this story decided to go there I was pleasantly surprised and that she's got she's got everything being dealt with and then we find out that the attendant 
for Princess Tao was the one that Key just saved back in the previous volume. So it's like every action taken has a consequence and you don't know who it's going to impact. And Key just actions of saving this girl has now impacted to where now Tao went to meet Yona and them. And I love that Yona's like, he's beautiful, right? And he's great, right? Kija's wonderful. And she's like, of course he is. And they're just like, girl talking about Kija, who is eating a kebab off the floor. <laughs> Very out of character for him. And so I like that Yona's like, Suwon. And Yona is honest. She's like, Suwon could listen to her, but we have no way of contacting him. Unless he shows up there, like he's probably going to do, that he's been, he's just been popping up in all the kingdoms that Yona's been at lately. You know, it just seems to be a thing. That's just, ugh. And I like that Tao says, I, I know how I look, but I'm 19. I use my looks to my advantage. She's like, I'm a lot smarter and older than I look. And so I just take advantage of that. And so we've got a Mangaka note. The Zeno Arc OAD was made to be a two-parter. When the Zeno arc was published, I had no idea I'd someday get to see the original four dragon warriors, the Crimson Dragon King, and Kaya moving and speaking in an anime. I'm so very thankful. During that time, I was worried about whether people would enjoy the story of Zeno's past without Yona, Hawk, and the other three dragons. But my readers responded better to it than I expected and enjoyed the OAD, so I'm glad I went ahead with it. Yeah, a girl, amazing story. And so honestly, I thought Hawk was going to show up in this scene and they were going to like talk it out and she was going to be like, whoa, sorry, it was just this time of the month. Didn't mean anything. But no, instead we have an assassin. But Hawk shows up to protect her anyway, because of course he does. And I like that he's like, Ch -ch -ch -ch, like gets away from her. He's like, sorry for going near you. And she's like, I didn't mean it like that. I love that she's just like, are you still on about that? I love that she's like, I'm not mad. And then I love that Jay Ha shows up and he's like, wow, he's really got this whole one-sided love thing bad, right? Oh my God. So then they go to rescue Princess Tao. All right. This year I've been hooked on Kodoku no Gurome, a TV show about a traveling salesman and a sample local cuisine, who sample local cuisine. Yutaka Matsuruge plays the main character. Masayuki Kasumi is the author of the manga. Oh, this year I've been hooked on Kodoku no Gurume. I don't really like eating meat unless it's ground up, but when Mitsuhige eats it, it looks so delicious. I also love Kasumi Sensei for his fun dialogue. I bought seasons one through five on DVD and have watched them several times. Also, I especially love the TV talk show Matsuko no Shiranai Sekai, particularly the food episodes. Hee <laughs> hee. I work industriously on my manuscript while watching both shows on an empty stomach. I draw some extra cover art and color drawings for Hana to Yume magazine. Please check them out. Well, I'll see you in volume 23. <laughs> Girl, you draw an empty stomach? What? Princess Tao. Where's Princess Tao? What's going on? Voldo. Okay, so we go back to this. I was about to read the whole thing again. I get so caught up in this. Um, but yeah, so we find out that there's apparently the five stars, which I thought at first was like the five generals, but it's these five men that are specially trained in um, Xing to take care, to like be martial artists. They're like special martial artists. And Misery, Mizari is one of them. And so is Boldo and Algira. But Algira, like, I like that Algira played the dummy and to get all the cats and stuff. It's great. But... Mizari reveals that they've lit a fire in the temple trying to snuff out Princess Tao, right? I love that he all, I love that Algera calls Hawk Hawk Kitty and Hawk's like Kitty, but he's all about saving Yona. I'm like, oh, my dude, Thunder Beast. But he gets the glaive stuck in the side of the building. Mm-hmm. So we cut to Princess Tao who is caught in the fire. And of course, Zeno, Zeno is drawn beautifully. Kusanagi draws, when Zeno is concerned, Kusanagi draws him like so beautifully. And he sees that she's trapped under the flames and he goes in to rescue her and the beam falls on him and he drops the medallion, of course, or the medallion falls. And, oh, and he's like, I'm so far from here, you palace. And I'm not going to regenerate quickly, but this is what my body's made for. And then, of course, as Algira steps in, we see Zeno on fire. And it's like, what are we going to do? I I don't think I'm going to wait a week. <laughs> That's what I think is going to happen. I don't think I'm going to wait a week. That's what I think is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have the ending story with the mangaka. True story. You should wear a hat during an earthquake. I'm wearing a helmet. 
Sis, if glass falls on that, you'll still be stabbed by the shards. It's got holes after all. A racing helmet. Right after the Kumamoto earthquake. Yikes, it's a big one. Working with assistance. Wow, a blackout. I can hear something breaking over there. I'm scared. Let's go outside. Let's go out. The floor is a mess, so we should put on shoes. No, my manuscript. Sensei, you look rather amusing. A Nyanko Sensei hooded raincoat. Same to you. And a lap blanket for work. Oh my gosh, and she was all dressed up for it. Okay. Cats don't come when you call them. These are all like little side comments from the mangaka. I couldn't find my pet cat. Eon, come here, Eon. When the thermos, when the trimmers calmed down, we headed inside the house, but the trimmers would start up again, so we'd have to go back out. It was the middle of the night, and our neighborhood was in a frenzy. There's fire engines and the apartment's fire alarm going off. Eep, it's shaking back outside. Eon, look, chicken. Let's return, let's turn on the radio. Allow me to read this note. Hold on, Sensei. Isn't this Ion? You found her? I'm not sure. The trimmers are continuing. It's very scary, so play this song. This request is for my neighbor Totoro. This is for her, right? Hey, Ion. What are you doing over there? Turn this way. Who requested Totoro at a time like this? A day later, Ion stay in this room until the trimmers stop. There's glass everywhere. I feel sorry for you. So I'll walk you around the house. And she's got her like on a leash. Water for emergencies. Hold on. The water's been cut off. I hear robbers are targeting women sleeping in their cars. How scary. I'm going to the bathroom. Then we'll guard the area. And she has like a Wudon sword. Oh my God. Wait a second. What do you plan to do with that? And there's a water heater. If someone attacks us, I'll splash them with hot water. Could you ask the same thing, sis? What, what's with that broom? It's prickly. I'll hit him with it. It shows the mangaka with a bit with a with a bike riding helmet, a sword, and a broom in one hand. I feel like I connect with her so much. It'd be great if you continue to read this series this year, Mizuo Kusanagi, and it's all the Dragon Warriors together. Oh my gosh, y'all! Oh my gosh. So yeah. So yeah, that's, that's, that's the volume. Oh, so I, I don't think I can wait a week <laughs> to find out if Zeno is going to be okay. I'm really nervous for Zeno. I really am. Um, I'm assuming he'll be fine because he's immortal, but he said he was far away from the palace and he wasn't going to regenerate as quickly. So if he gets incapacitated, that's not good. Um, but I just want to save Princess Tao and for them to, figure out what to do next. So I, this arc is off to a very, very interesting start. This, this arc did not start like I thought it was going to. The fact that it spent most of its time like doing this introspective of how Hawk feels about Suwon, etc. And then it cuts to this new arc with Xing. So I, I definitely want to look at the comments on Patreon for volume 21. I definitely want to do that. And then I don't think I'm going to be able to wait. <laughs> I think that it may be a couple days, but I don't think I'm going to be able to wait. I think I'm going to have to read volume 23. Just saying. So, but I, I'm very curious to know your thoughts down below. Holy cow, this volume was amazing, but I'm really excited to see what happens next. So in the meantime, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, take care. And yes, I will be back very soon with uh, volume 23 of Yona of the Dawn. Bye.